welcome here at Deutsche Telekom and welcome at the Mobile World Congress. Even though, Nidian, I have to say, why do we call it only Mobile World Congress? Already in 2007, the EU Commission stated that convergence is a must-have and I think the industry has debated this for a very, very long time. But now it's real. We actually believe that mobile-only business models are not really sustainable in the long run. And therefore, therefore, we might going forward talk about the World Congress of Integrated Networks or Seamless Connectivity. The challenges and opportunities in our industry are clear. Capacity, demand, continues to grow rapidly, we have to continue to optimize our production cost, which is especially true in Europe with the regulatory regimes. Part of that is what has been discussed and gets now implemented is the standardization, virtualization and the software-defined network. And of course, when we think about many of the old infrastructure, suppliers are cancelling contracts and we have to get rid of the old legacy. Most important of all, for the customer who doesn't care about our network technology, what we see is the most important argument continues to be the best network experience. That is the driver for customer satisfaction. It was, is, and will be, we assume. Now, looking at the mobile technology. Last year, the mobile data grew by more than 80%, 8-0. By end of this year, more devices will be connected to each other than human beings. And latest in the year 2018, video will be two-thirds, two-thirds of the data demand um, also in the mobile networks. So no wonder that every 10 years a new mobile technology comes up. So therefore you could argue 5G under quarters. So 5G is the next big thing. But being a little bit a techie, let me say, I'm very happy, very happy that we managed to have a great pilot on 4G, so-called LTE Advanced. Actually last week, we managed in a test pilot a speed of 580 megabit per second in the German city Alzheim. And for those who are really techies among you, it's actually advanced LTE combination of multiple input, multiple output with carrier aggregation. But with that, I do stop talking about the tech stuff. So, but, we tend to, we tend to talk always about access. LTE, LTE advanced, 5G, Sometimes we also talk about fixed access, fiber to the home, fiber to the curb, vectoring, next generation, G dot fast, VDSL, etc. We believe that we have to look at the mobile and fixed technologies integrated, look at an integrated access strategy, and beyond that, also look at the non-access networks our central nerve systems and brains of the network and therefore we love to talk about all IP and bringing everything in the same language, the IP language. And only if these things come together, the optimization of the non-access networks, mobile and fixed access, when you take a holistic network approach, the best, the best customer experience can be created. It starts with the PSTN migration. Historically, 
all the operators have different platforms for different services. One for fixed line voice, mobile voice, internet, TV, etc. And when you want to introduce a new product, you have to touch many, many boxes and distribution points in the network. As a result, it can take one or two years in traditional networks to actually introduce a new product. Now, that picture, I call it the spaghetti picture on the left-hand side, is outdated. We are moving at high speed to a world which we call all IP, or in pictures you can call it the lasagna, from spaghetti to lasagna picture. Spaghetti to lasagna, that's all IP, which basically means creating the same platforms for all types of services. This has huge advantages, and Nick Yan will talk about the customer advantages, but among others, as you can intuitively recognize, the introduction of new products and services in the new world takes days or weeks instead of two years. No? Because they just become a software update. That's the main advantage of the lasagna architecture when you move all IP. I also have to say that the exploding data traffic, when all things get, to get connected, actually require such an architecture. Because without that, the operator's networks will literally burst. Or only be able to cope with the increasing traffic at the expense of tremendous cost. Now, looking at the lasagna picture, all IP world, same platform for all services. Another important aspect is to actually harmonize and centralize technology you need to steer the network or services um, in a more central way. There are many ways to do that. One, we can like we do in Germany, is the broadband network gateway, the BNG. That's one way. Or you can even go a step more radical. I think about, I talked about this last time, which is then the so-called Terra stream architecture, which we piloted in Zagreb. And here all things come together. Yeah, you literally put the intelligence for steering the network into a cloud in a data center, double secure. And when you do this, you have all nice things combined. You have virtualization, software-defined networks, and you have a high optical IP integration. Now for the non-techies, what does it mean? Everything is super fast. Everything is super fast. It's a 100 gigabit ethernet. Everything is super fast. And everything is de facto latency free. So you could connect hospitals and then you could, on principle, do real-time surgery with a patient here and another surgeon standing at the other place and talking about it. So, how does that fit together? The PSTN migration, which is the switch off of the old publicly switched to Napoli and migration towards all IP, the optimization of the IP production, which is TerraStream or BNG, so to say the brain of the network, are only the first steps. We believe that based on that, have the possibility to connect networks across Europe once they speak all the same language, all IP. And the benefit of that would be that it will be, in, it will be possible, possible to introduce new products and services immediately across the whole footprint very easily. And this is always to be seen in combination with integrated fixed and mobile access networks. So that together 
brings the transformation program of the decade and will lead to a super simplified architecture which is, as I said, all IP, highly virtualized, has integrated accesses between fixed and mobile networks. Now you should say, wonderful, why is Claudia Nehmer talking about spaghetti lasagna and all these software-defined networks, so what is the benefit of that? First of all, as I said, the product introduction time for our own tariffs as products, but also for partner products, gets reduced from one or two years to just a few weeks or days. That's one aspect. Another aspect is indeed cost reduction. As you might know, Macedonia was the first country which was all IP, finished in January this year, and the saved production cost were actually 20 euro per customer and per year. And the main savings come from energy savings. Energy savings because we took all the old stuff out of the buildings and reduced payments for our suppliers because the service level agreements are cheaper. And in addition, you need less technicians to go around and actually do the switching together because it's all pre-installed. So it's time to market, it's production cost, and just to mention one product from Macedonia, from a customer perspective, it's plug and play. Because at a customer, you just go on our internet webpage, click, click, then you do internet broadband on demand for three or six days. You can use that, you do not have to wait for a technician to install, no wait for a contract to be signed, no call the call center, you have it immediately, plug and play. So that's the advantage, plug and play, time to market, and production cost. Now, you could ask, when will you be done? Macedonia was the first country, Slovakia will be the second. We want to finish the IP transformation until end of this year. Then Hungary and Croatia, then Montenegro, and the last countries will be, because they are most complex, Germany, Romania and Greece by end of 2018. Now as these land marks are so nice, let me comment quickly on the timeline for the LTE. As you can see, as of today, we have introduced LTE in all countries, but Poland, Poland will happen mid of this year, and then the idea is to get soon to 50% coverage, and the last country is actually Albania, which will be by end of 2015. So, we just calculated actually in 2016, every second antenna, every second antenna across Europe will be LTE equipped. So, with that, I stop talking about technology because it's now, Nikian, up to you to translate this a little bit into customer experience and in particular into what we are doing in Germany. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Claudia. 